I have a baby who stutters repeatedly We'll name him history, he repeat after me He's my legacy, son of my hard work Future of my past, he'll explain who I be Rank me amongst the greats, either one, two or three If I ain't number one, then I felt your victory Ain't in it for the fame, that dies within weeks Ain't in it for the... Hi, welcome back, uh, uh, 74, we're gonna solve absolute value equations I remember at the beginning of the chapter we talked about um, absolute value and remember the absolute value of 8 was 8. Remember the absolute value of negative 8 was also 8. Remember absolute value always equaled a positive number, right? And then remember we talked about possible solutions where we solve these and we did these real quick ones, right? <clears throat> what could I put in for y that would come out as 8? Well, we just did that. I could put in positive 8 or I could put in negative 8. Remember, I have two answers. Because whatever I put in the absolute value comes out positive. I could put a positive 8 in, I could put a negative 8 in, and I come out positive. What could I put in to, uh, for P to come out negative 6? Well, can I put anything in the absolute value and it come out as a negative number? No, there is no solution to this one. All right? All right, so that's a quick review of what we've done. Now let's take a look at where we're going. All right. What do I do here? I had whatever is inside equaled 8 or negative 8. I had whatever was inside equal the number or the opposite. So let's do that. Whatever is inside, 2x minus 3 equals the number or 2x minus 3 equals the opposite of the number. Now check that out. Now, it's not as simple as one up here where I just have my answers already, but I can solve these equations. I'm going to add 3 to this side, add 3 to that side. So now I have 2x equals 8. Divide by 2, x would equal 4. Or, come over here to solve this one, add 3. Now the nice thing is the steps are all the same. 2x equals negative 2. Divide by 2 x equals negative 1. Alright, so that's what we're going to be doing more today. More of these, and we're going to talk about exactly how to solve these, and got some steps for you right here. So, what are the steps? You may want to just pause this right now and write these steps down, okay? Alright, so the first thing is I need to move everything outside the absolute value bars to the other side. So in this case, I have a 2 on the outside and I have a 3. If you remember when we solve the equations, we do, um, I always say, do GEMDAS backwards. GEMDAS, PEMDAS, all that fancy stuff. So I'm looking at, I have an add, and then I have a multiply. That's two times this is, all right? So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. Now I have 2 times the absolute value of x minus 8 equals 12. All right, now some of you are going to say, can I distribute that? You may not distribute with absolute value. So what is this? The opposite of multiply by 2 is divide by 2. So now I have x minus 8, the absolute value of x minus 8 equals 6. Now, wh set whatever is inside the absolute value bars, x minus 8 equal to the number, or set whatever is inside equal to the opposite of the number. So then I'm going to add 8, at 8, at 8, and I get x is 14, or negative 6 plus 8, x is 2. So I have my two answers once again. All right? Oh, and how is education supposed to make me feel smarter? Besides, every time I learn something new, it pushes some old stuff out of my brain. We okay, have some more examples here. We have the absolute value of x plus 5 minus 8 equals 15. All right, remember the very first thing we have to do here is uh, get the absolute value by itself. We have GEMDAS and we have to solve it backwards. So let's, let's take a look at what's bothering x. This is a grouping, all right? Yeah, inside the grouping is a plus 5, but we're not going to worry about that. It's What is the operation? It's grouping. We also have subtraction. So if we work backwards when we saw, we have to undo this first. So I'm going to add 8 to both sides. Now I have the absolute value of x plus 5 equals 15 plus 8 is 23. All right. 
Now I have to undo my grouping. In this case, grouping here is absolute value. And how do we undo absolute value? We undo absolute value by making two new equations every time. Whatever is inside the absolute value bars, x plus 5 equals the number and x plus 5 equals opposite the number. Now we solve these, so I'm going to subtract 5. So I have x equals 18 or subtract 5 x equals negative 28. Alright, so I have those two, two answers all the time. Let's try this next one. Alright, let's go to GEMDAS again and see what we have. I have grouping. Do I have any exponents? No. Do I have any multiply? Well, this 2 right here is 2 times all that. Now a lot of you want to distribute that, but we can't distribute it into an absolute value. And I also have a plus 4 here. Common mistake. <clears throat> Excuse me. Can I add 4 plus 2? No, I cannot do that. I have to work backwards. So the opposite of adding is subtracting. So it's subtract 4 from both sides. Then I have 2 times the absolute value of 3x equals 24. Now I have to do the opposite of multiplying. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. So the absolute value of 3x equals 12. Then I have to undo the absolute value. Remember, to undo absolute value, I have two equations. I take whatever is inside, set it equal to the positive, and whatever is inside, set it equal to the negative. And then I solve. Divide both sides by 3, so x could equal 4, or divide both sides by 3, x could equal negative 4. So there you have it, all right? Two more examples, uh, and let's move on. Let's try this one. Oh, fractions, this looks nasty. But remember, we have to get everything to the other side, so I'm going to add 8 first. All right, now I have negative 5, absolute value of 3 eighths, x minus 1 6 equals 20. Now, I remember, I cannot distribute absolute values. So I'm going to divide by negative 5. So now I have the absolute value of 3 eighths x minus 1 6 equals negative 4. Now, at this point, I can say I have absolute value equaling a negative number. If I had other things over here, I couldn't say that. But I have just my absolute value stuff equaling a negative. I can't have an absolute value equal negative, so it's no solution. All right, no solution. All right, at the start of the season, Mr. Sullivan has to make sure that all the basketballs are inflated correctly. They must be nine pounds per square inch PSI with an error of 0.5 PSI. What is the maximum minimum possible? So now, let's talk about this. I think most of you could probably figure this out. Uh, it can either go below nine or above nine, right? So if I added 0.5, I'd have 9.5 PSI. If I had subtracted it, I'd have uh, 8.5 PSI, which is great, but now let's make that into an absolute value equation. So what we're talking about here is the setting, learning how to set these things up. And one thing you need to know is that when you set this up, this number here, this error, is called the absolute error. And the absolute error is what you always put on the one side by itself, all right? Now what goes in here is my new value, what I don't know, and I'm gonna subtract what I have, nine. The reason I'm gonna subtract, you'll, you'll see in a second, so now if I were to solve it like this, I'd have x minus nine equals 0.5, or x minus nine equals negative 0.5. Now, the reason I'm subtracting is because now when I do this, I'm adding 9 to both sides. And 9 plus 0.5 is 9.5. All right? Or over here, I'm still adding. All right? But because this was a negative, a positive and a negative, that was our error, plus or minus. Maybe you've heard that before. The, it, this could be within plus or minus 0.5 PSI. Then I have x equals 8. 
0.5 PSI. All right, so again, this is called the absolute error right here, and this is how you would set up an absolute value equation. You need to know that. I'm going to ask that on the test. All right, so see how smart you are? Pause the video and try these. All right, here we go. So I have an absolute value. 3x minus 1 equals 13, or 3x minus 1 equals negative 13. Add 1. Add 1. So I have 3x equals 14, or I have 3x equals negative 12. Divide by 3 on both sides. Just solving equations, right? Uh, that's a nasty fraction. I'm just going to keep it as 14 over 3. If you want to, you can, you know, uh, put, get a um, mixed number maybe. All right, and then this one is x equals negative 4. All right, there are my two answers over here. Oh, it looks like it's a negative to start off with, so it looks like it's a no solution, right? But look, I have things that are outside the absolute value, so I need to solve it first. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. Now I get negative 5 times x plus 3 equals negative 12. All right, give me some more room here. Now I need to divide by negative 5. Remember, you cannot distribute with an absolute value. So now I have the absolute value of x plus 3 equals a negative divided by a negative is a positive 2.4. Now we're good. See, this is why I'm saying at the beginning it looked like there was going to be no solution. But right now, I have a positive number here, so I can set up my two equations. x plus 3 equals 2.4, or x plus 3 equals negative 2.4. And I'm going to subtract 3 on all these. So x equals negative 0.6 or x equals negative 5.4. Hopefully you feel smart about that like, uh, like you should. And uh, just to celebrate, you can uh, celebrate with Homer Simpson here. I'm a college man! I won't need my high school diploma anymore! I am too smart! I am too smart! I am too smart! I am too smart! S-M-R-T! I mean S-M-A-R-T! <laughs>